One more thing, the swan song of a legendary optics manufacturer or a cash grab for those spending others' money? The Olympus M Zuiko Digital ED 150-400 F45 TC 1.25X IS Pro. I'm not saying that whole name again. It finally arrived. I now have my own copy of Olympus's final lens, the OM 150-400 F45 Pro, and I've taken it out and shot it a few times over the last few months. And actually, compared to my recent wait for things like the Q2, it wasn't that bad, taking about nine months from when I ordered it to when I received it in August. Considering the state the world has been in since this lens was announced, the scarcity of raw materials and disruptions in supply lines, I don't think that's unreasonable or unexpected. The frustration compared to, say, Leica was just the lack of information provided to the vendors and an apparent preference to fulfillment of direct orders first. The major New York-based vendor that I used had a few expected shipment dates and they just kept missing and eventually their only solid date that Olympus would give them, or OM at that time, was way down in December at the end of the year, which seemed more like it was set by OMD to tie it to a fiscal year rather than any practical expectations. Occasionally they'd get surprise shipments in the single digits. I ended up actually receiving mine back in August. And some people have read into the shipment issues as indications that OM Digital Solutions was already in trouble, but I don't think that's the case. I think it was principally just the environment that we were in. But anyway, it's here now, and it's in my hands, and it is excellent. It's everything I'd expect for from a $7,500 lens. Everything is just smooth and accessible. Now, I know $7,500 isn't your normal lens, and I've seen some claims that it's overpriced in a cash grab as Olympus was walking out the door. After all, that's roughly the same price as a Canon R5 with an RF 150 to 500 and a teleconverter. Or you could save another grand and get the R6, which looks even closer on the spec sheet to the EM1X. I'll talk more about the specs later over the past nearly a year, you've probably seen them by now. What you're probably more interested in is knowing how does it handle, I and mean, it handles quite well. But more importantly, we'll turn somebody who's not a pro into a passable wildlife photographer. I'll talk about other use cases for these lenses later on, but considering how bird heavy the YouTube telephoto scene seems to be, I've decided to head to one of its well-frequented birding locations. And with me, I brought the Olympus OM E1X, and the 150-400 Pro, along with the Canon R6 100-500. So let's see which of these is more intuitive and easier to use. It's worth repeating that I'm not a pro. Uh, in fact, I've never used lenses this long before. So this would be an interesting experiment. Let's see if I can get even passable photos. Uh, in the past, I've used 300-500 millimeter range to shoot sports, but really for the last few years, I've really just done 24 millimeter to 35 millimeter range. Uh, so this is going to be this is going to be interesting. And I've only got a couple hours before I have to go pick up the kids. So let's see what I can get. Looking out at the marsh, things looked promising with a group of egrets about 100 yards out, a lone heron a bit further, and some hawks perched in between. I snapped a few shots, each with the OM 150-400 and then the RF 100-500. I got a few environmental shots with the RF 100-500. Obviously, it didn't have the same range as the OM 150-400 Pro when taking into account the latter's field of view on the Micro Four Thirds sensor and the inbuilt teleconverter, turning it into a 35mm equivalent 300mm to 800mm or 1000mm with the teleconverter-enabled lens. The OM lens lets you set and then recall a set focus point, which is incredibly useful if you're watching a specific area. It frees you up to look for other shots while being able to recall your preset focus point with the press of a button. Any of the four lens buttons, which makes it easy to find regardless of your camera orientation, they all do the same thing. The manual does suggest locking the teleconverter switch, but honestly, I never locked it when shooting and never ran into any issues inadvertently switching state. It actually takes a little bit of force to toggle the teleconverter class. I did find myself toggling the autofocus manual focus switch by accident on occasion, but all in all, it wasn't really a problem. There's no choke collar for overriding autofocus, just the switch, but the OM lens does allow for full-time manual focus override. I often found myself fighting with the R6 and the RF lens when trying to correct focus, and that's after diving into the menu items to support manual focus override at all. Unfortunately, the birds were too far out to get any good close-ups with the RF 100-500. I was shooting with the R6, which had a 20 megapixel, 35 millimeter full-frame sensor, but the contemporaneously released R5 has a higher resolution sensor, which would permit some additional cropping, while maintaining comparable quality and noise with the 20 megapixel EM1X. The R5 offers an EFS crop mode with a 1.6x crop factor, but that actually sacrifices a bit more resolution compared to the R6 and the EM1X, dropping to 17 megapixels. If you shoot in full frame and crop in post, you can zoom into the equivalent of a 1.5x magnification before you drop below 20 megapixels. Effectively, for sake of our comparison, that makes the 100-500 lens closer to a 750mm lens on the R5, 
I was actually shooting with a 1.4x teleconverter, so the lens became a 420 millimeter to 700 millimeter. The lens won't zoom out below the nominal 300 millimeter mark with a teleconverter attached, or 420 to 1050 on the R5 cropping at 20 megapixels. And this would actually push you just past the equivalent range of the Ohm 150 to 400 with its inbuilt 1.25x teleconverter and the 2x cropping factor of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. Of course, you can add an external teleconverter to the Olympus lens as well. And in fact, I decided to shoot with the Olympus MC20 2x teleconverter. Adding that to the crop factor and maximum native range of the lens, the OM Pro has the field of view of a full frame 2000 millimeter lens, shooting 20 megapixel images with a depth of field equivalent of an F22. The 100 to 500 maxes out with teleconverter and cropping to 20 megapixels at 1000 millimeters F14 on the R6 or 1500 F21 on the R5. Into the smaller relative aperture is only part of the drawback to the teleconverters, as resolution and sharpness are also noticeably affected. Many shots showed some noticeable softness with the 2X on the Olympus lens, which is attributable to the teleconverter and sometimes to environmental effects. Despite shooting with what was effectively a 2000 millimeter lens and 35 millimeter equivalents, many of the birds were too far back for any good close-ups. The few that were closer were standing around being quite boring, so I packed up deciding to look for another spot, but in the end gave up on the birds and just hung out with the bees. Both lenses are incredibly close focusing for their focal length, with the RF 100 to 500 focusing at just under a meter away, about four feet, with the OM 150 to 400 focusing at about 1.3 meters. That gives the OM a maximum magnification factor of 0.71x, allowing for some sort of nearly macro photography, while the RF lens only provides for a 0.33 magnification. The focusing limiter on the Olympus is another advantage here, letting you limit focus to under six meters, about 20 feet, when you're shooting closer subjects. The Canon autofocus was generally quicker, and I'd say the superior, but as I mentioned in an earlier video comparing the R6 and the EM1X, neither is perfect. The R6, even with updated firmware, tends to have issues focusing on foreground objects rather than subjects that are behind the foreground even when centered on the frame with the face tracking enabled. In an open field or on a court, these issues won't have the same impact as shooting through trees or high brush. Coupled with the more advanced model-based tracking, the R3, there are many situations where the Canon combination will likely be superior, and OM imaging has some catching up to do if and when they release an updated model. And please, don't get me wrong, the RF 100-500 is an excellent lens. I was amazed how sharp it was when I was using it to test camera noise in the RX vs. EM1X video and it's an excellent lens when you're staying within its stock range. But add a teleconverter and it gets dark and frustratingly reduces its focal range. That also eliminates the portability benefit if you're intending to use it as a poor man's 520-700 f10 or 600-1000 f14. Honestly, I'm not sure if it'd actually be a problem to pack and transport the RF lens with the teleconverter attached, but the external zooming mechanic that lets it collapse so small does make it look vulnerable extended, and more importantly, takes up more space so I've broken it down whenever packing it. That adds to complexity and risk, especially in wet or dusty situations. When I returned to my original shooting location, there were some egrets that had moved in closer and would have been comfortably within the range of the RF lens. But because of the added effort to set up and break down the RF lens and my short shooting schedule, I decided to stick with the Olympus lens only. A literal handheld moonshot was one of the early publicity shots circulated for the Olympus OM-150-400. It's not a light lens, but considering what it packs, it is surprisingly portable and ergonomic, and I have handheld it outdoors for hours without problem. I did mount it on a tripod, however, for my own moonshots. The OM-150-400 is maneuverable enough for sports, especially ones with a large field where the inbuilt teleconverter will be particularly helpful to capture the far end of the field, think gridiron football. But in many situations, the RF-100-500 will be the ideal range, and the Canon lens feels noticeably lighter. The RF 100-500 feels like it was built for general sports shooting, as is Canon's autofocus system. And if I were to bring either of these to my kids' sports, I'd bring the R6 and the RF 100-500. Although with the resurgence of the Delta variant of the coronavirus, there hasn't been a lot of sports going on right now. Fortunately, the OM 150-400 is small enough to slip into a messenger bag, making it great for street photography as well. Although you might want to swap out the camera for something a little bit more discreet, like an EM5. Back in November when I published my first video about buying into Micro Four Thirds for 2021, one of the first comments I got was, Micro Four Thirds is dead, and videos about Micro Four Thirds are dead. And yet, that continues to be my most popular video. It demonstrates, though, that some people, regardless of the benefits or merits, will continue to turn their nose up at the system. And yeah, not a lot of people are going to buy a $7,500 lens, but then a lot of people aren't going to buy a $12,000 or $13,000 Canon lens either. Canon has some more economical options. The fixed aperture f11, 600 millimeter, 800 millimeter lens, but they're just not in the same league as the Olympus lens. And for that matter, neither is the 100 to 500. 